We're recording? Yes, we're recording. We are. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Scott. How are you? Hi, pleased to meet you. <laughs> um, so we are Astronauticas. It's a podcast and an association of divulgation for Italy. Okay. So I would like to ask you, uh, which are the difficulties you are encountering in explaining people, uh, general public, mm -hmm. the um, characteristics of space, the details? and The, the diffi most difficult part is sometimes I want to explain one thing, but to get to that, I have to spend a lot of time building it up. And that's, that's great. In some cases, I had a, I had a video where it's, I wanted to figure out if you could see a laser pointer from the space station, and I had to go through a lot of math to get there, and everybody complains, why didn't you just say yes or no? It's like, because I want to do the math. So, yeah, it, I think the public is very capable of understanding anything if you give them the stepping stones to get to the answer. And you just have to make sure they follow you all the way and that you're not making assumptions of things that they may or may not know. But I think people are very smart when you give them the roadmap. Uh, that's interesting because once we met uh, the principal investigation of... Uh, um, Uh, an instrument that was aboard uh, of Schiaparelli, mm -hmm. and uh, he told us uh, not to simplify, not mm -hmm. to simplify ex in excess, because people is able to understand. So yeah. that uh, meets uh, I have a, your... I have a great uh, you know, appreciation for how smart the general public can be yeah. in the right yes. circumstances. <laughs> and the audience will self-select as well. That's the other side of things. Yeah, because also the important thing is not to collect everyone but the, uh, trying to get interested some people who are uh, allowed to be interested. Yeah, are, and, and uh, the great thing is that sometimes something may be too complicated for a person, but they might go away and watch some other stuff and then come back and understand yeah. it. But if you never put the information in there, they will never get that information. Okay. So somebody has to do this, the hard stuff, mm -hmm. and sure, there's a lot of you know, shallow stuff, but we don't need to worry about that because we are okay. talking to educated audiences or intelligent audiences, let's say. I don't think education is necessarily a prerequisite for understanding any of this. Correct. Uh, one of the difficulties we encountering uh, is that uh, we speak Italian and a lot of term uh, terminology mm -hmm. is in English. So we don't even know if we can use the English terminology or to translate uh, some things are not... Uh, well, and, and you, you've got to realize a lot of the technical terminology has, frequent has root loops in Latin anyway, which is you know, closer to Italian in many ways, right? So, uh, language is language, and people, you just might have to look it up and explain what these words are. And most of these words that we start using, like hypergolic, where does that come from? That's a, a bunch of words that come from German and Latin... But once you explain what it is, everybody understands. So, yeah, make two things, they burst into flames. That's an easy <laughs> concept. And you are using the Carbo Space Program to... I started that. That's kind of the thin edge of the wedge okay. that uh, got a lot of people to actually pick up and look at these things and understand it in a new way. So you thought that uh, is a, a great uh, method, a great tool to let people see and understand in mm. seeing what they... Oh, it, yeah, I mean, it has literally changed people's understanding. There are people now that were... I had people that tell me they were going to study English at university and write books, and now they're... I'm now working in aeronautics uh, building aircraft because I started playing this game. Uh, it, it's, you know, people... It gives you everyday experience and things. So we sit down, we drive our cars, right? We don't necessarily understand how the brakes or anything work, but we understand how to control a car. Kerbal lets you build a spacecraft and fly the spacecraft, and so you get this kind of working knowledge of orbital mechanics, how you have to perhaps switch your orbital altitude if you're going to perform a rendezvous. And then when you're building stuff, you again get this... Uh, this working knowledge, oh, I need to make sure my center of mass is further forward and I need to make sure I have enough thrust to weight and that the, the, uh, the staging will work cleanly. And all this translates into real-world practical knowledge, which, if you want, you could turn it into a career, right? You can yeah. go and study and learn more and more. It's, uh, the world we live in is fantastic because the knowledge to do any field is basically available on the Internet. Yes, correct. You, you can be an astronomer, you can go and study other planets just by downloading data from NASA, from old missions, and you can find new results in old data and become an astronomer without even looking through a telescope. 
And that can lead to a citizen science uh, program. I'm a big fan of citizen science. I think everybody's capable of doing great things if they're interested. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> Fly safe. Okay. <laughs>